Hi, welcome to Biomedical Engineers TV. In this video, we will look into dental x-rays or orthopantomograph. Today, the conventional dental x-rays have moved beyond just filmed x-rays. These machines are also referred to as OPG machines. If we define these instruments in simplified manner, it's nothing but low-dose x-rays machines with an intraoral dental imaging or continuous 3D dental cavity imaging machines. A panoramic radiograph is a panoramic scanning dental x-ray of the upper and lower jaw. It shows a two-dimensional view of a half circle from ear to ear. Panoramic radiography is a form of focal plane tomography. Thus, images of multiple planes are taken to make up the composite panoramic image, where the maxilla and mandible are the focal trough and the structures that are superficial and deep to the trough are blurred. Other non-proprietary names for a panoramic radiograph are dental panoramic radiograph and pantomogram. Abbreviations include PAN, DPR, OPT, and OPG. So where it all began? The first attempts to image the whole jaw were made with intraoral radiation sources at the beginning of the century. The narrow beam principle was described in 1922. Experimental work and development of equipment in the 1950s resulted in commercially available machines in the early 1960s. The panoramic technique originated from the need to image the jaws, but it was also applied to other anatomic regions before CT became available. Panoramic radiography is an essential element in oral radiology today. In the early part of the 20th century, many researchers were developing techniques using movement of the X-ray tube and the film in order to visualize structures or foreign bodies, particularly bullets, situated within the patient. André Bocage, a French researcher, was the originator of the principles of body section imaging. In Bocage's seminal work, patented in 1922, the author mentions the possibility of imaging curved surfaces such as the jaws. Further interest in this field of research did not resurface for another 20 years and resulted in the development of X-ray equipment using two quite different radiographic techniques to produce an overall image of the jaws. One group of researchers developed a small X-ray source which, when positioned intraorally, would directly expose an X-ray film molded to the outside of the patient's face. The other group relied upon the production of a tomographic image of the jaws with the tube positioned extraorally, combined with either an intraorally or an extraorally positioned film, or orthopentomograph. First, we will look into the components of panoramic equipment and imaging. X-ray tube head produces the X-ray beam. The beam is aimed slightly upwards towards the slot in the cassette holder. Diaphragm. The X-ray beam is collimated by the diaphragm to form a vertical slit-shaped beam. The X-ray beam width should be no greater than 5 mm. Cassette holder. Has a metal sheet at the front that prevents scattered X-ray photons reaching the cassette which would otherwise degrade the image. There is a narrow vertical slot in the holder directly opposite the X-ray source. This ensures that only a small amount of the film is exposed at one time. Cassette carriage moves the cassette behind the cassette holder during the exposure. Bite block, used to locate both upper and lower incisor teeth in an edge-to-edge -edge relationship in the focal layer. It also separates the upper and lower teeth to prevent overlap. Light beam markers, used to position the patient correctly to ensure that the teeth fall in the focal layer. Head holding apparatus, allows the patient's head to be immobilized once accurately positioned. Handles minimize movement of the patient. So what is panoramic equipment and imaging or orthopantomograph? Dental panoramic radiography equipment consists of a horizontal rotating arm which holds an x-ray source and a moving film mechanism, carrying a film, arranged at opposed extremities. The patient's skull sits between the x-ray generator and the film. The x-ray source is rectangular collimated beam. Also, the height of that beam covers the mandibles and the maxilla regions. The arm moves and its trajectory may be described as a rotation around an instant center which shifts on a dedicated trajectory. The manufacturers propose different solutions for moving the arm, trying to maintain constant distance between the teeth to the film and generator. Also, those moving solutions try to project the teeth arch as orthogonally as possible. It is impossible to select an ideal movement as the anatomy varies very much from person to person. Finally, a compromise is selected by each manufacturer and results in magnification factors which vary strongly along the film, 15 to 30 percent, 
The patient positioning is very critical in regard to both sharpness and distortions. Let's look into different types of dental x-ray techniques. First, let's learn about the bite wing x-ray. Bite wing x-rays are incredibly common and are often taken for preventative purpose because they are a great way to see any decay between teeth or below the gum line. The term bite wing comes from how patients must bite down on the x-ray film. These types of x-rays can be taken right in the dental chair. Bite wing x-rays are commonly used to locate the source of tooth discomfort. Many modern dental offices don't use film anymore. Instead, they use a sensor, which sends the x-ray to a computer for review by the dentist. This makes the process a little faster because they don't have to develop the film. The second technique is periapical x-ray. Bite wings show most of the tooth, but if your dentist needs a good look at the very entirety of your tooth or the jawbone, a periapical x-ray is a better choice. This type of x-ray captures an image of the entire tooth, including a little past the tooth root. The x-ray typically captures the entire upper or lower row of teeth in one image. These types of x-rays may be used if your dentist suspects damage to the tip of the tooth root or issues with the jawbone. The third technique is occlusal x-ray. Occlusal x-rays are designed to capture what goes on inside the roof or floor of the mouth, which helps the dentist see full tooth development and placement. This may be used to find out why teeth haven't erupted yet or to spot supernumerary or extra teeth which can damage healthy permanent teeth. This type of x-ray may also be used to diagnose a cleft palate or fracture, hard to find cysts, abscesses, or growths that can be spotted with an occlusal x-ray. The fourth technique is panoramic x-ray. A panoramic x-ray uses a special machine that takes one image of your entire upper and lower teeth. The result is a 2D image of your 3D mouth. If you suffer from frequent complications or have had major dental work in the past, your dentist may recommend a panoramic x-ray every now and then to make sure nothing is brewing. A panoramic x-ray may be used as a common x-ray method and is often used in preparation for major dental procedures such as getting braces. Dentists also commonly use it to diagnose major complications such as jaw tumors, cysts, and sinusitis. The fifth x-ray's technique, cephalometric projection. A cephalometric projection is an x-ray of one side of the entire head. This is commonly used by orthodontists so they can see how the teeth and jawbones fit to better create a treatment plan that involves the entire mouth. Your dentist may also suggest this type of x-ray to diagnose any throat complications such as lumps or cancer. Last, if you suffer from sleep apnea, dentists can often help, but yours may suggest a cephalometric projection first to clearly see your throat structure and determine the cause of your sleep apnea. The sixth x-ray technique, cone beam x-ray. CBCT, CAT scan, or cone beam x-rays are an imaging method that uses computerized technology to convert two-dimensional images into a three-dimensional picture. Compared to a traditional two-dimensional x-ray that shows a flat image, the 3D picture shows every dimension and aspect of the teeth and surrounding bone. This was the simplified video on dental x-ray machine as the application is wide field of dentistry. We tried to keep it as simple as possible to understand the instrument. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe down below, and I will see you guys in the next video.